Well, welcome to another presentation on the marine radar. In today's video, I'll try to keep it short and I will talk only specifically about the radio waves that are used by the marine radar to detect targets at sea and how the magnetron of the radar works and assist in its operation. So I'll make a series of videos on marine radar because I want to keep them short to hold your interest and yet at the same time cover a particular and specific topic. So before I go into the discussion uh, about the way in which the radar pulses are generated and used in the modern ship's radars, I want to explain a little bit about the nature of the radio waves. The radio wave has the same characteristic of all other wave forms. Uh, so a comparison with ocean waves can be made. The wave motion consists of a succession of crests and troughs moving outwards at equal intervals and at constant speed. Uh, looking at the figure on your screen now, uh, you can probably uh, now comprehend what do I mean by crest and troughs and I will also discuss other definitions uh, like the wavelength which is the distance between successive wave crest. Uh, the symbol is of course of a lambda and uh, what you have here is the cycle. The cycle is the movement of uh, one crest through the trough to the next crest. Uh, and again, uh, I was on the topic of wavelength. The marine radar commonly operates on two centimetric wavelengths. One is the X band. The X band radar operates on the three centimeter wavelength and the S band radar uh, works on the 10 centimeter wavelength. And of course, the height from the crest to the trough is the amplitude of the wave, which basically uh, defines the energy of the wave, how far the wave can be transmitted. Uh, in terms of power, uh, the, pow the amplitude of the radio wave, which as I showed you last in the last screen, it is actually a measurement of the amount of energy contained within the wave and hence of course it describes the power of the wave. Now once the radio wave leaves the antenna, it will lose some of its energy in the atmosphere. It cannot sustain the same energy that you transmit it with. It loses some of the energy in the atmosphere. Uh, you can draw an analogy with the uh, echo sounder which uses sound waves and it happens the same thing. Once the echo sounder releases the sound waves, uh, not the entire wave goes and hits the bottom of the seabed and the echo is received. Some of the energy is always lost. As energy is created, energy is also lost. So the energy loss in this case, of course, we come back to the radar here. Energy loss for the pulse is proportional to the square of the distance traveled. So similarly, decreases as the square of the distance. So that sometimes an echo from long range is very weak indeed compared with the high power pulse which was transmitted. It could be at a millionth of the original strength. The maximum range of the radar equipment will depend on the peak power of the transmitted pulse which is often quoted in kilowatts. All right, then uh, so normally, if I can give you an example, so for example, a three kilowatt will send the power up to 16 nautical miles, a 15 kilowatt might send it up to 45 to 48 nautical miles, a 25 kilowatt could send it up to 100 nautical miles, something like that. Then we talk about the frequency. The frequency is the number of cycles which pass a point in a given time. And normally it is, the given time is normally a second. We use a second to calculate the frequency. The symbol of the frequency is the letter F. Uh, if you think about it, then the cycles per second is given by the common name Hertz and wavelength and frequency are linked by the formula uh, 
uh, speed of the radio wave which is about 300 meters uh, per microsecond is equal to uh, frequency multiplied by the wavelength so does the centimeter wavelength uh, corresponds to a particular frequency bandwidth these frequency bandwidths were allocated by international agreement for use by civil marine radar systems there are some circumstances where x band performance will be better than the s band and vice versa the x band radar's frequency uh, which i should have discussed in the last screen its approximate frequency is about 10000 megahertz wavelength is about 3 cm like i told you before uh, it is high resolution and detects uh, targets which are much closer uh, and smaller scan is possible uh, i mean it doesn't it, it does not only detect targets which are closer but it is normally used to detect targets which are closer the s band radar uh, has a frequency of approximately 3000 megahertz a wavelength about 10 cm and mainly used for enhanced detection range that is long range scanning uh, and requires a much larger scanner in terms of radar transmission uh, if i go back to the echo ranging principle uh, that we discussed on the first video of the uh, radar that I put up and the link is below in the description section. You can analyze that uh, what is necessary to produce a good echo. The radar pulse must have very high energy to carry it over a reasonable distance. Because if you use a low energy waves, the wave as soon as it is transmitted, uh, the energy will be lost, it will be dissipated and the wave will die down even before it hits the target. The radar pulse must also be of a short wavelength to enable the echo to be timed accurately. It is generated for only very short periods of time, fractions of a microsecond, to ensure echoes of nearby objects will be uh, We now move on to the magnetron of the radar. The magnetron is a device in the radar which produces the pulse. It is known as the cavity magnetron as well which is a form of a valve. Uh, the magnetron was invented in the 1940s by someone called Randall and another person called Boot. And it consists of a cylindrical block of copper with cavities drilled in it. And the size of the cavities dictate the radio frequency of the transmitted pulse. And the device essentially converts a voltage into a burst of radio wave with a centimetric wavelength that we talked about before. Remember the 3 centimeter and 10 centimeter wavelength? That's the one I'm talking about. The, the copper is surrounded by a powerful magnetic field which generates the high energy in the radio waves. It consists of a cylindrical block of copper with cavities drilled into it and the size of the cavities determine the radio frequency of the transmitted pulse. Now we move on to the specifications and characteristics of the pulse length and the pulse repetition. The pulse length, we'll start with that. Uh, it is the length of time the radio wave is transmitted for uh, and it is known as the pulse length and it is usually expressed in um, microseconds. Uh, please do not confuse pulse length with wavelength. You can see the difference. All right, pulse length is different from wavelength. That's why the diagram is shown on the screen here. The diagram that you see on the screen actually shows that the ideal pulse shape and the practical pulse shape. In practice, it takes a little time for the pulse to reach its peak power. And that is why you switch on the radar uh, earlier than you want to use it because it will take time for the radar or the magneton to reach the peak power. What you see here is uh, the pulse length available on one of the radar systems. I've got this one from one of the radar systems uh, we had. And you can see here how the pulse length is being showed. So you have the short pulse for shorter ranges and the long pulse for longer ranges. So naturally, if you want uh, earlier detection of targets, you are using it for enhanced detection, long range scanning, you will use higher pulse lens. And if you are using it for shorter or rather uh, closer targets, you will use the uh, shorter pulse lens for shorter ranges. 
so the pulse length of course affects the strength of the return the picture definition uh, the minimum detection range as well as the range discrimination so it is basically the strength of the pulse uh, how far it can take it uh, the energy of the pulse and and how how you can use it for uh, either a long range scanning or short range scanning so you can see here this is an example of a long the long pulse was sent the long pulse had sustained energy for it to reach the target as there was some distance from the radar scanner to the target and in this case the because it was a long pulse the the wave not only reached the target uh, but bounced off it came back to the radar scanner to be picked up as well so this is an example of a so you can see here if i want to display or show the same thing to you uh, how it works on a radar screen you can see in case of the short pulse you can see that the short pulse uh, goes and comes back it's the return is much weaker and uh, sometimes if the target is further away you will not be able to detect the target on the radar screen so you can see how the uh, short pulse and the long pulse uh, affects the picture definition on the screen of course like i said before if you want to detect closer by targets if fishing boats smaller targets which are closer to the ship short pulse will also give you a, a, a good echo it will give you a high picture definition because what happens with short pulses is you are sending them out and receiving them more frequently it helps in the earlier detection of targets which are closer to the ship with long pulse you are sending out pulses uh, and again i'll talk about more about that when we talk about pulse repetition frequency uh, you are sending out one pulse and it takes longer for the pulse to go and come back and um, and like we discussed in our first video once you sent out a pulse the transmitter is then switched off and the receiver is switched on so by the time so till the time the echo is received back the transmitter is switched off so when you send a long pulse you send it with the intention of sending one a long a strong pulse further away to pick up a target which is further away and then uh, have enough time for the echo to come back and display the target on screen but when the targets are closer to your ship you don't uh, afford you can't afford for the time you want quicker detection you want faster response and that's why you send out short pulses of uh, uh, which are most frequently sent out short pulses of waves and uh, so that it hits the target and you receive the echo quicker i hope you understand understood the difference between the two all right so again here i'm showing you the pulse length with the minimum detection range is equal to normally half the pulse length in theory uh, taken literally but that is what it is all about so i'll talk about the pulse length and pulse repetition frequency now so the interval of time between successive pulses uh, is the pulse repetition interval uh, because of the high speed of the pulses the echoes of target from long range have plenty of time to return before the next pulse is transmitted uh, most radars will vary the pulse repetition frequency or the pulse repetition interval as the operator chooses different range scales all right so for example a 1200 hertz of a pulse repetition frequency would equal to about 800 pulse repetition interval or 800 microseconds of pulse repetition interval and that might be used for a range scale of 0.125 to 12 whereas a, a 650 hertz of pulse repetition frequency may be equal to about 1500 microseconds of pulse repetition interval and may be used for a longer range scale say about 24 to 100 nautical miles Uh, the theoretical maximum range of radar is a function of the pulse repetition interval all right for if, if for example the pulse repetition interval was 1000 microseconds a second pulse could travel 300000 meters in that time however the pulse must go out and travel back in this pulse repetition interval so therefore the distance becomes half that is 150000 meters so remember one nautical mile is 1852 meters so the theoretical maximum range then will become about 81 nautical miles
so that is why i said it was normally in theory it is about half all right so i hope that you understood the importance of the magnetron and how the importance of the pulses that it generates uh, how the pulse repetition frequency the pulse repetition interval the pulse length the amplitude of the pulse makes a difference in the detection of targets in a radar a very large number of these pulses are generated every second about 1000 per second this is known as pulse repetition frequency like i told you and the interval of time between the pulses is pulse repetition so again high speed of pulses enables echoes of targets from long range to have plenty of time to return before the next pulse is transmitted